Peyton Manning spent most of his career in the spotlight carefully avoiding giving any spicy quotes to the press. But early in his career, he let his feelings get the best of him after being pushed too far by one man, his own kicker. Wait, his what now? 1998 was a season of big changes for the Indianapolis Colts. They were being run by a new GM and led by a new head coach who brought in a new QB coach to work with the starting quarterback they'd just picked number one in the draft. Polian also acquired some extra competition at kicker, bringing in Mike Vanderjack from the CFL. He wound up unseating Kerry Blanchard, who'd made the Pro Bowl for the Colts in 1996 and left as the team's all-time leader in field goal percentage. Blanchard was pretty salty about getting dumped for a dude who'd never played in the NFL, but Vanderjack was like, hey, kicking is kicking, dude. 1998 was also a season of sameness in one big area, the team's record. 3-13 in 97, 3-13 in 98. Some of that was Peyton struggling as a rookie, but Vanderjack wound up being something of a bright spot, finishing sixth in the NFL in field goal percentage and first in field goals made from 50 plus yards. And both Peyton and the team's win-loss record got way better the next season, with the Colts winning their division for the first time since 1987. The magic didn't last in the playoffs as the Colts dropped a close game at home in the divisional round, but the pieces were there and the future seemed bright. Vanderjack got a big payday the next season, and he wasn't shy about noting that he was getting paid like the best kicker in the league because, well, that's exactly what he was. The Colts proved the 99 turnaround wasn't a fluke and went back to the playoffs, but they blew a 14-point lead against Miami, and then, with a chance to win in overtime, Vanderjack did this. No good. He took that pretty hard. After a very crappy 2001 best remembered for this legendary moment in press conference melting down. Uh, playoffs? Don't talk about playoffs? You kidding me? Ownership put the team in Tony Dungy's hands. The 0-2 Colts were kind of uneven, in no small part because Vanderjack was struggling, but he finished the season strong and Indy did enough to snag a wildcard spot. Good news, they didn't lose another close, winnable playoff game. Bad news, they got pummeled and suffered the worst postseason loss in franchise history. I want to stop for a second here and bring in my friend and colleague, John Boyce. That's me. John, I'm going to give you the combined statistics of an NFL quarterback from his first three career playoff games. Okay. And I want you, based on those statistics, to try to guess which quarterback this is. Let's do it. Are you ready? Mm hmm Okay. One touchdown, two interceptions, 48% pass completion rate, 186 passing yards per game, and an 0-3 record. Jim Kelly? John, this quarterback is Peyton Manning. That, <laughs> He's bad. But that was a really good guess, <laughs> and you're a very good friend, so thank All you right. for trying. Bye, guys. I did that experiment because I want you to understand what Peyton's football reputation was, at least in some circles, in early 2003. An extremely talented quarterback who just could not get it done in the playoffs. So let's take those numbers, mix them with the terrible taste of losing by six touchdowns, add the security of getting a big contract, and you get Mike Vanderjack saying this on Canadian TV a few weeks later. All week before the Jets game, I'm like, number 18, we're going to handle it. Me and you, we're going to win this game. And he's like, yeah, yeah, okay. And I'm like, Peyton, show some enthusiasm. You're the quarterback and we need to win this game. I just don't see it from him. We need somebody who's going to get in people's faces and yell and scream. Coach Dungy, he's just a mild-mannered guy. He doesn't get too excited, he doesn't get too down, and I don't think that works either. I'm not a real big Colts fan right now, unfortunately. I just don't see us getting better. This is some wild stuff for any NFL player to say about his head coach and franchise quarterback. It is especially so coming from a kicker, even a very good kicker. Vanderjack quickly apologized in a public statement. Now, all of this was happening while Peyton was in Hawaii for the Pro Bowl. He didn't say much about it for the first couple of days, insisting he'd deal with the situation when he got back home. And then, in the middle of the Pro Bowl, like during the game on the sidelines, he did the opposite of that. Here we are, I'm out of my third Pro Bowl. We're talking about our idiot kicker who got liquored up and ran his mouth off. So what has the sports world come to? We're talking about idiot kickers. He has ruined kickers for life. Akers and Vinatieri, these guys are great guys. 
They've been getting killed all week because our idiot ran his night. If he is still a teammate, we'll deal with it. You know, that remains to be seen. But the sad thing is, Lynn, he's a good kicker. He's a good kicker, but he's an idiot. Peyton wound up apologizing too, and Dungy said they'd handle things internally going forward. Both players seemed like they just wanted to move on, but that was not how this was going to work. The 2003 Colts opened the regular season against the Browns, ended at the last second with a game-winning field goal by Vanderjagt. Manning said everything was great, and Vanderjagt insisted his status as a team member was solid. Indianapolis kept winning, starting the season 6-1 when this ESPN The Magazine cover came out. Yeah, that does indeed say but. The story inside said, well, kind of a lot. It highlighted how much the liquored up part of Peyton's response really bugged Vanderjack, so much so that his family briefly considered suing Manning for slander. Again, this is a lot of butt chatter. It presented Vanderjack as the kicker who didn't think of himself as just a kicker, and who teammates treated as something of a leader. But the boldest claim this story offered was the central one. What if Vanderjack's public comments had woken up the Colts and actually helped them become a better team? Manning was only quoted once in this story, and he was basically like, this isn't a big deal, y'all media types are just bored. Which is a very Peyton Manning approach. What made this story so big at the time was that after a lifetime of giving measured comments and avoiding giving opponents bulletin board material, Peyton kind of snapped in Hawaii. It turned out Vanderjagt was not happy with this story, insisting he was misled by the author regarding what the article would be about. Dungy said the same thing, and Peyton was not available for comment, though nobody claimed anything about the story was false. Indy just kept winning in the meantime. Peyton had one of his most productive years, and Vanderjagt finished the season perfect, no missed extra points or field goals. They both kept up that level of play in the postseason as the Colts beat the Broncos and the Chiefs to advance to the AFC Championship game. The weather sucked, Peyton struggled, and the Pats won, but this was still progress. Manning went back to Hawaii for the Pro Bowl, and this time, Vanderjack got to go with him. Did the media use this as an excuse to talk about what had happened a year before? Buddy, you know they did! Things were pretty calm throughout the 04 season. If you were talking about the Colts, you were likely focused on the historic numbers Peyton was putting up. Indianapolis opened the playoffs with a win over Denver to set up a rematch with New England. I should point out that the Patriots had home field for this game in part because Vanderjack missed a 48-yard game-tying attempt when these two played each other in Week 1. Anyways, Mike Vanderjack felt like talking again, specifically about how the Patriots weren't as good as they used to be and were, quote, ripe for the picking. Pat safety Rodney Harrison jumped all over that, reminding the world that this was the same dude who had run his mouth about Peyton Manning and Tony Dungy. Vanderjack backed up his trash talk by accounting for every point the Colts scored. By that I mean one field goal and a 20-3 loss, and he did not stick around to chat with the press afterwards. For Manning, the public boogeyman had shifted from Peyton can't win in the playoffs to Peyton can't beat Tom Brady. But that changed in the 2005 season, when the Colts handled the Patriots in Foxborough. Things got even better in the playoffs when Indianapolis got a bye, home field advantage guaranteed, and no New England to worry about after the Broncos knocked off the Pats. And with time running out at home against the Steelers, all they needed was Mike Vanderjack to deliver to keep them alive and force overtime. He gave them one of the worst misses of his career, and the idiot kicker label got trotted out again, though this time in a very different context. A few days later, Vanderjack wound up on Letterman, attempting the exact same kick that had killed the Colts' Super Bowl dreams. And while he spoke in Manning's defense, this TV appearance didn't sit well with some people in the organization. So that became, weirdly, the last field goal attempt Mike Vanderjack made in a Colts uniform. His contract expired, and Indianapolis decided to sign his counterpart from New England, Adam Vinatieri. One of the first phone calls he got? From Peyton Manning, naturally. True to form, Vanderjack didn't stay totally quiet about the organization on his way out either. But leaving the Colts didn't end the questions about the time the idiot kicker got liquored up and trashed Peyton on TV. The Colts traveled to Dallas that season, and in the week before the game, Peyton got asked about Vanderjack. He did what you'd expect, offered praise and compliments to an opponent, because that's what Peyton Manning usually does. Vanderjack declined to comment, though he'd already said he was looking forward to proving some in Indianapolis wrong. The Cowboys won, but Vanderjack missed both of his field goal attempts that day, and about a week later, he was cut. 
Peyton Manning went on to win his first Super Bowl, with plenty of media pointing out how clutch and non-troublesome Indy's new kicker was along the way. And that was it for Mike Vanderjack's career in the NFL, even though he was the career leader in field goal percentage at the time. Years later, he wouldn't say Manning's comments in 2003 had kept him from continuing his career. But he certainly wasn't pleased, and the drinking accusation still bugged him. Looking back, it seems like what Mike Vanderjack wanted was to be seen as more than a kicker, to be respected as an equal. He believed his accomplishments and devotion to winning merited that. But the diamond earring and the magazine cover and the perfect season didn't change the fact that the league has a hierarchy, and franchise quarterbacks from one of the NFL's biggest families are damn near at the top of it. Peyton Manning probably didn't think a few harsh words at a Pro Bowl would stick to Mike Vanderjack for years, but they did, stamped to every moment in which Vanderjack stumbled like an embarrassing tattoo. Thanks for watching this episode of Beef History. If you want to see another example of teammates clashing, only it goes way, way worse than this, check out T.O. vs. Donovan McNabb. If you're worried Beef History is bad for your soul, well, go watch Rewinder instead and stay blessed!